chairperson may interrupt to, or stop a speaker if the public comment is irrelevant to library business, unreasonably repetitious, or substantially disruptive. No speaker may employ language that is obscene, scurrilous, sorry, or recklessly defamatory in comments that describe board members or any other participants at the meetings or library staff, including their opinions, proposals, and duly constituted actions. No conduct shall be tolerated or allowed that unreasonably provokes or disturbs others, disturbs another, or interferes with the conduct of a peaceful meeting. <clears throat> okay, that being said, I'll call the first speaker, Kate Burke. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Kate Bird. I'm a resident of Pickens County and a patron of the Pickens County Library System. I'd like to speak tonight about the desire expressed by some community members and echoed more and more by library board members that the library be a safe place for children and young adults. I agree that patrons, staff, board members, and visitors should all feel physically safe and free from harassment at the library. But to expect the contents of books in the children's and young adult sections to be safe for all who open them is unrealistic. It's a fallacy to think that a parent can give a child free reign in those sections and not encounter something that the parent or child finds objectionable. It may be language, babies' naked bottoms, magic, LGBTQIA plus content, anti this, pro that, demons. The list of possible objections is so long it would take much more than my allotted time to list them. The overriding reason given during board discussions for moving young adult books to the adult section was to make the young adult section safe for readers in the lower end of the age range. Again, that is not possible and does not acknowledge the capability of children to choose what to read by themselves or with parental input if that is the parent's choice. Just as there is a suggested age range for any section of the library, there are ranges for reading level, comprehension, maturity, life experiences, and parental involvement. I am again reminding the library board that what you feel as individuals must be separate from your legal duties as library board members. Everyone is entitled to their views, but board members must remember that they represent everyone in Pickens County. YA books are being moved to the adult section because of the personal feeling that the YA section should be safe for all. This is undermining decisions by the librarians who are trained professionals and best know the library community. It is also a grave disservice to the parents and teens who rightfully expect that books written for the young adult age group are shelved in the young adult section. I appreciate this time to share my concern. Janelle Raines. I'm going to use my three minutes to pray out loud. I hope you'll join me. Lord, you are our Heavenly Father and Protector. We thank you and praise you, for you alone are good. Thank you for always being present in our lives. Thank you for your love of your precious innocent children. In this dark world, please guard children's hearts, minds, and souls from all negative influences, which would draw them away from your precepts. Lord, as you know, there are materials and programs taking place in libraries that can harm children's minds and souls, that contain vulgar, sexually explicit material, that seek to normalize and promote sexual misconduct ideas. Those materials are leading children to have sinful thoughts, which lead to acting on those thoughts. Please soften the hearts of this library board to understand the consequences of allowing easy access to material that harms precious innocent children's minds and souls. Provide innocent children a life with God-fearing parents. Grant children a God-fearing library board and staff members 
Grant children God-fearing teachers, mentors, coaches who truly have children's best interest at heart. Surround children with authentic, inspiring, godly role models to look up to. Lord, please guide this library to provide children with positive, enriching learning materials, activities, and entertainment which draw them even closer to your light. Teach them, Lord, that removing books is not a violation of children's rights. Libraries are not mandated to help provide obscene material to anyone. Guard children's hearts, minds, and souls as they navigate social dynamics. Keep them safe physically and emotionally wherever they go and help this library director and staff to better curate material that would guard them from evil influences. Give this library board and library staff the grace to sense your presence with them so they can hear your angel's guidance in their hearts and minds. Help us to keep children's hearts pure and their past clear, Lord. Help this library system to lead children in moral ways and don't allow books that promote immorality. Help this library system to ultimately have a godly servant's mindset and to do your will and experience your grace in their lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jesse Hunley. Distinguished members of the board, Madam Chairman, Director, good evening and thank you uh, for your thoughtfully, thoughtfully considering our words, praises, and concerns. I can appreciate the magnitude of, of the work that is involved in running a library. It can be exceedingly difficult at times with, with seemingly unlimited number of challenges that they present themselves on a daily basis. One such challenge that has yet to be resolved, however, was addressed in a letter written by Senator Rex Rice of District 2 to a Miss Lisa Aikens of the South Carolina State Library. And in this letter, Senator Rice wrote that Pickens County Library System has fallen short of the proviso 27.1 and is therefore advocating that funding be withheld. According to the letter, Senator Rice uh, speaks of a peculiar list of books that are currently in the young adult section, but really ought to be placed in the adult section. Based on the rating systems of booklooks.org. With the exception of two, every book that I will mention here has a rating of four, which explicitly states that no minors are fit to read them. Regardless of your opinion of how quote unquote mature you think they are. The other two have a rating of five, which is for adults only. Every single one of them, of these fours and fives, are currently in the young adult section. Which ones? Some include Push, Sold, Sex, The All You Need to Know Sexuality uh, Guide to Get You Through Your Teens and Twenties, The Handsome Girl and the Beautiful Boy, Damsel, Forever, Red Hood, <coughs> Perks of Being a Wallflower, etc., etc. And it it's, it's, won't be until these books and others of the same ilk are removed and put where they actually belong. You will not get your funding. You cannot. Now, we actually want you to be funded. That's the ironic thing. We want you to be funded. We want our children to have the resources that they need to be well-rounded students and practitioners of what is good, of what is wholesome, and of what is right. Why on earth do you insist that it is necessary that our children read such filth? Why? It goes without saying that we do love our children. And I think every single one of us here in the board does as well. But I also want to, want to affirm to you that we love and care about each and every one of you as well. We do pray for you guys. Now you may not understand that or the reasons why that can be a conversation that we can have on this on the side in private. But my prayer, our prayer is that you would see the error of your ways in this, in your, the logic in this. Let's put this stuff where it actually belongs, not in the, the hands of our children. Thank you. Kathleen Campbell.
The goal of this input is love, which comes from a pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. Friends, we have been deceived. I served on the Pickens County Library Board about four years ago. During my tenure, a concerned parent brought to my attention the book Gender Queer. At, that, at a board meeting back in 2020, during new business, maybe 2021 early, I shared the graphic pictures of this book, graphic drawings of oral sex, male masturbation, and equally disturbing, the, pr the promotion of the library being a great place to find porn. Every person on the library board at that time was appalled and shocked that a board such as Gender Queer was in our library. Some of those who were on the board then are still on the board now. Likewise, when in 2021, two seats were open to applicants, I shared the book Gender Queer with those who were considering applying for the library board positions and they were also equally shocked. They could not believe that such a graphic book was available in the Pickens County Public Library. In fact, that was the number one reason the de these dear ones applied to be on the library board, to protect the innocence of our children from pervasively vulgar books, books that are damaging and destructive. Somehow, in four short years, we have gone from recognizing inappropriate and obscene material to now defending the very books that just four years ago were abhorrent. What has changed? The, gen the book Gender Queer has not changed. I ask what has changed? How has a board comprised of good people who found gender queer offensive, inappropriate, and perhaps even detestable now affirm, support, and promote this and other books like Push, Choke, and Sold? I implore, th I implore the lo this library board to fully and truly consider what has changed and is it really a change for the better. Our children are our legacy, our only legacy. They are children, the most vulnerable and impressionable patrons in society. How dare we jade, steer, and make attractive those things that we know are harmful, diseased, and destructive. Thank you. And I have handouts. Luke Campbell. Good evening. Um, it's been uh, several months now, or many months, since uh, many facts have been brought to your attention about the hundreds of books in the libraries that uh, do not belong to children, should not be seen by children. Um, some are pornographic. Evil will argue that, uh, no, they're not, for some reason or another. Uh, same people understand differently. Uh, another issue is the top of the uh, material, the vulgar, discussion, the, the words inside of the, just all over the book, they don't, how many F words does a, a child need to see in any single book or any number of books? None. But that's, that's, they have that. The third major area of the books is the stuff about the, the actual storyline. It's, uh, many are just plain sickening. Uh, the evil's argument is to, uh, well, yes, but you need to have these life experiences or learn about life's experiences. That's, a bunch of tripe and it, it's time to make it go away um, <coughs> the thing is this it's for man wants to die and then the judgment um, I have a long list on, on I'm sure on myself I'm not going to be the judge uh, nor is uh, anybody here the officer the people in here any, any place so it's going to come from Jesus Christ He's the judge. It matters not whether you think God exists or not. It's going to happen. God's a fact is, is the issue. And uh, this stuff that just promotes, it's uh, basically child abuse. Uh, that's what we're talking about. You know what the content is. Uh, the solution, of course, is to have a vote, motion the books to be, result, to be gone. That, that's, where, that's where we stand. 
the, the facts have been presented about what's in the books. Uh, evil doesn't talk about the content of the books. That's the issue. It's not who writes it, oh, it's a black guy wrote it, so we're racist. No, 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 no. That has nothing to do with anything. It's the content of the books and what the kids see. And no, the parents are not going to grab them every time they walk off or take 10 seconds to read something. Make a motion. Remove the books. Thank you. Renee Geisler. Without light, we would never know the colors of the rainbow or see our reflection in the faces of our children. We would not know where we come from or we would not know where we're going. The same is true in the spiritual realm, like luminaries lighting the path home. God's word lights the way to life as he intended it to be, full of beauty, joy, and hope. My name is Renee Geisler. I've been a resident in Pickens County for almost 11 years. I was a former teacher for 20 years. I also went back to school after I left the teaching field and became an educational therapist. And I worked with kids with learning disabilities for 14 years. So I've worked with children with their brain and their thinking and whatever. And um, it's been a majority of my adult life. Uh, but, and when we moved here permanently 11 years ago, we joined a group from our community and went and read books with the kids once a week at A.R. Lewis, and then that closed and we went to Haygood Elementary. And so my love of country and my love of children wants this society to be a moral and true and right society. And with the, some of the availability of this literature, so-called, in our libraries here in this county do not edify anybody and it, and it brings moral decay to our society. There is no question in my mind that what the brain sees visually through the eyes, whether pictures or words, is like taking a photograph which can be looked at long after the picture was taken. Our brains record everything we see and hear. For this reason, Books that are inappropriate shouldn't be available to all children up through young adulthood. We have obscenity laws specifically for that problem. This is the type of material that leads to the moral decay. Samuel Adams, one of our forefathers, wrote, and I quote, it is in the interests of tyrants to reduce the people to ignorance and vice for they, the tyrants, cannot live in a country where virtue and knowledge prevail. The religion and public liberty of a people are intimately connected. Their interests are in our enrollment. They cannot subsist separately, and therefore they rise and fall together. And for this reason, it is always observable that those who are combined to destroy the people's liberty practice every art to poison their morals. Liberty will not long survive in total existence of moral decay. Thank you. Denise Davidson. Okay, she's not here. We'll move on. Brittany Fowler. Oh, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. I am Brittany Fowler and I'm a resident of Pickens County who deeply values our library and the roles they play in our community. I would like to start by taking a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude to our dedicated librarians and librarian staff. Their expertise, passion, and unwavering commitment to serving our community are invaluable. They work tirelessly to ensure that our libraries remain a rich and diverse resource, helping patrons navigate a vast world of information. I'm grateful for your diligence and care in fostering an environment that champions intellectual freedom. I also want to talk about the critical importance of intellectual freedom in our library and community. Intellectual freedom is more than just a concept. It is a fundamental right that allows individuals to seek, receive, and impart information freely. It is the cornerstone of a vibrant democracy and a catalyst for personal and societal growth. 
Our library serves as a vital resource for all members of our community, providing access to an array of ideas, cultures, and viewpoints. It's a place where people can explore, question, and expand their horizons without the fear of judgment and censorship. We must also con consider the impact of censorship on our community. Restricting access to certain materials stifles creativity, diminishes critical thinking, and ultimately undermines the very fabric of our democracy. Every community member deserves the right to explore ideas that may differ from their own. While I understand and appreciate the desire to protect our children, I also recognize that censorship can lead down a slippery slope, resulting in apathy, ignorance, conformism, and stagnation. As you make decisions about our library's collection and resources, I encourage you to prioritize and promote intellectual freedom. I appreciate and applaud the board's recent decision to not reconsider books already in the adult section. This sends a strong message in support of intellectual freedom and I am very grateful for it. I also want to point out to those of us who support intellectual freedom, we do so for a purpose. We seek robust discussions and the right to access information, not the promotion of inappropriate content for children. Claims and suggestions otherwise are misleading and simply not true. Let's work together to ensure that our library remains a welcoming space for all. One that not only provides access to information, but also encourages curiosity, the discovery of new ideas, and lively discussion. Our library should be places where we can openly discuss ideas, just like we are doing here tonight. I recognize there are people in this room who adamantly oppose my views, but how fortunate are we that we get to freely engage in discussions like this without fear of arrest or censorship or being stoned. This is the essence of intellectual freedom and we must protect it. And I hope that as board members, you feel the same that you need to protect this very important right. Thank you so much for all y'all do for the library. I know y'all do a ton of work, so thank you. Thomas Geisler. Um, I've got a question for the group, not only the people on the board, What's our greatest resource? Children. Children. You're 100% right. Children are our greatest resource. And we, as parents and as people that are concerned in the community, should bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We should. So our children are our most important resource. They are under tremendous attack today. If you don't think so, listen to the songs that are sung. Remember White Christmas? The Ten Commandments, that was a pretty, that was a great, great movies and songs. The songs that are coming out now are unbelievable. But besides that, look, where are the Boy Scouts at? They're bankrupt. Why? Because they tried to have homosexuals in with these, and they wanted women in the Boy Scouts. It's the Boy Scouts of America, but it doesn't exist anymore. So who won on that battle? Satan. But look at, look at the school curriculum. This is interesting. When we were formed as a nation, they, thought, they taught school from three different things. And I got it right here. The Constitution, they used the Constitution to teach. Here's the Constitution, I got it. And the New England Primer. The New England Primer was written by Benjamin Harris, and it's a 90-page work containing religious maxims, woodcuts, alphabetical assistance, catechisms, and moral lessons. Many of its selections were drawn from the King James Version of the Bible. And they also taught from the Bible three things, New England Primer, the uh, Constitution, and the Bible. And we grew to be quite a great nation, but all of a sudden we need to improve upon that, huh? Oh, I guess so. What have we got now? This is what's going on in our schools. Okay, here we go. CRT, Common Core, Juneteenth, Diversity, uh, Gender Affirmation, Teacher, quote, own the students, uh, Young Men and Girls Sports, Trannies Teaching uh, Kindergarten, Porn Literature in our Library. <laughs> this is ridiculous. That is not literature. That is trash. But anyway, where's it gotten us? That's interesting. Where has it gotten us? National Center for Education. The U.S. has placed 16th out of 81 countries in science. They're placed 34th out of 81 countries in math. SAT scores have shown a marked decline, particularly since 2006. About half of South Carolina's third through eighth graders can read at grade level, meaning half can't read at grade level. 
And we're arguing about porn? Are we missing? What's going on here? So anyway, we have to take this under consideration. We've been talking about this for a year. Why are we dithering? This shouldn't be in our... If you want to read that stuff, you can go online and read it. Thank you. Do it. Uh, Galatians Pamela 5. Pamela Benson. God will not be mocked. During the formative years of 13 to 18 years old, medical science reveals that teens experience extremely high levels of hormones, transforming them physically and chemically. Teens become very concerned for how they fit in among their peers due to these rapid hormone changes. This in itself can be very unstabilizing both physically and mentally. Yet. While walking into this very library, it's hard to ignore the sign flying under the brilliant gay pride wind chime display advertising privacy for 13 to 18 year olds that reads, our young adults collection houses, young adults ha collection houses materials for 13 and 18 year, year olds. Um, Unfortunately, it has not been enough to allow and tolerate the ideology of others and what they prefer to do as adults in their own personal preference and private sex lives. But now they have overstepped their boundaries by publishing and pushing their perversion onto the minds of innocent children and formative teens through literature that is infiltrating and indoctrinating their already unstable minds. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't know I was coming to this meet day. <laughs> Uh, where does this lead to? Um, okay, this is what I wanted to address here. Uh, with this being said about the formative years of 13 to 18 year olds and them pushing this ideology through uh, the literature that's being pushed into our school systems and libraries now from those that have their own personal preference. Wikipedia re uh, research reveals that suicide rates and ideation among lesbian, gay, bisexual, uh, and transgender youth is significantly higher than the general population. Newport research reveals that LGBTQ plus teens are at increased risk of suicide and mental health issues and make suicide attempts four times greater than other U.S. teens. There is also a higher rate of depression among LGBTQ plus teens, which leads to higher rates of substance abuse. Among all 13 to 24 year old youth, 84% wanted mental health care, 66% experienced symptoms of anxiety, and 53% experienced depression. NPR uh, quoted that nearly 40 to 50% of these teens under the LGBTQ agenda or mindset now consider suicide. Where does this trail and trajectory lead us? In states that have legalized this ideology and literature being pushed among our youth, um, once a teenager buys into it, that state, and the, if the parents that birth this child Thank and you. raise them, your time is up. The state okay, will since there was taken. not, Denise Davidson was not here, we have one um, time for Crystal Chappelle. Good evening. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak. My name is Crystal Chapel, and I am a resident you're fine, of Pickens County. Um, I have been for 41 years and an educator for 20. Um, I'd like to take a minute to say um, how grateful we are to the Pickens County Library. They have such a wonderful program and have been such a wonderful and inviting place for my family. We've been involved in many of its wonderful programs. Um, we've celebrated every summer with the summer reading program. We've been involved in the teen cooking classes. We learned to play the ukulele. But one of the most um, invaluable experiences that we've had here is just the freedom to indulge in our passion for reading as a family. We've found so many countless books that we treasure and hold so dear. And this has been especially vital to my niece as she's grown and learned who she is and more who she aspires to be in such a safe and inviting and accepting place. Um, when she felt 
that she was not accepted in other places such as her own school she came to the library and was invited with welcoming open arms and she comes in every chance she gets to be a part of the teen programs she's currently at the escape room right now sorry I'm a little emotional but um, it's such a wonderful place to be for all people no matter who you are um, who you worship and um, your sexuality um, instead of limiting access to these books we should embrace an open dialogue about these challenging themes of course we all want to protect our children um, and our libraries are such a vital space where diverse ideas can flourish it should be a place where we learn more about people characters and cultures that are unlike our own and furthermore it's through many of these books that many wish to ban that children who are different find comfort in characters that are like themselves um, so let us stand together let's support our librarians in their mission to ensure that every voice is heard and every story has a place by advocating for open access to knowledge we build such a strong and more empathetic community thank you, thank you. that concludes our public comment um, did everybody get a chance to read the minutes from the September 19th meeting? Mm -hmm. Were there any additions or corrections? I thought they were very, very comprehensive in the discussion. So I move that we accept the minutes. Do I have a second? A second. Mm -hmm. Discussion? All those in favor? The library director's report, Stephanie. Um, I did want to first um, thank the library staff for their amazing work in the aftermath of Helene. The storm came through and caused a lot of damage on Friday the 27th. <laughs> as soon as we were able, staff checked the condition and the power at the branches. On Sunday the 29th, when the majority of staff did not have power or internet and some like myself were still unable to get out of their driveways or down their roads staff who were able came in and opened the library's regular hours on sunday and we were open regular hours at liberty easily and central clemson from then on the sunday after the storm for people to come in and charge their devices um, whatever they needed to do um, we had to wait a little bit longer for Pickens to get their power back on, but as soon as they did, we opened that library as well. While Pickens was without power, staff from that library helped out at, helped out at the other branches, as well as helping with the county information hotline and the, um, at the EOC and the elections department as they got ready for absentee and early voting. So just to reiterate, this library system has an amazing staff and I wanted to give them some much deserved recognition and thank them for coming together and being able to open these libraries for the public as soon as possible we had our annual staff day Monday um, this is a staff led training session that is organized and carried out by a staff committee uh, one of the people on the committee this year was Lena um, it was great as always and I wanted to uh, thank the park manager Michael Trotter and his staff for allowing us access to an amazing venue I also wanted to mention FEMA currently has a disaster recovery center set up here at this library location on the second floor. The DRC opened Tuesday and will be open um, through this Saturday from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. for walk-in assistance with information on disaster assistance programs, applying for disaster assistance, checking out the status of your FEMA application, understanding FEMA notices or letters, housing and rental assistance information, referrals to relevant agencies, and meeting with a small business administration representative. Um, early voting begins Monday, October 21st, and will continue through Saturday, November 2nd. There are five early voting locations, two of which are at the libraries, one here at the Hampton Memorial Library in Easley, and one at the Central Clemson Library in Central. Voting will be from 8.30 to 6 p.m., uh, for more details, please visit pickenselections.org and to see your registration status and your sample ballot along with other information, you can also visit scvotes.gov. 
Um, Pickens County's small business liaison, Brittany Chapman, will also be visiting each library to offer resources to small business owners and potential small business owners in Pickens County. On October 22nd, she will be at our Liberty Branch from 1030 to noon and the Easley Branch from 2 to 330. And October 24th, she will be at the Central Clemson Library from 1030 to noon and the Pickens Branch from 2 o'clock to 330. Um, uh, we will also, I uh, wanted to mention, we'll be doing several Halloween outre outreach events. Some of them got um, rescheduled because of the storm, um, but please uh, stay tuned to our Facebook and calendar of events online to see when and where we will be with library staff giving out candy. And that's all I have for my librarian report. And Cassie's going to present the statistics. Um, so we have the first quarter statistics for, it says FY24, but this is FY25. <laughs> um, so we've been experiencing an increase in visitors. Um, material circulation is up from the previous fiscal year. Um, the e-audio has gone way up, which we expect to happen every year as um, the CD format dies out and people are moving still to digital. Um, the computer and wireless users were a little bit down, um, however we did have been seeing an increase since the storm of people coming in and using our wireless. Um, September was up, um, up from July and August um, and we still with the spectrum outage have been continuous continuing to see a larger number of people bringing in their devices and, and using the Wi-Fi here. Um, meeting room attendance um, and reservations are up. Um, the children's events, as we talked about in the last meeting, we have been focusing on more quality events over quantity, so we have decreased the amount of events that we are doing, but you could see we had a 25% we had 25% less events in the first quarter of this year, but we had almost um, almost an equal number of attendance. So um, that's that was our goal, um, was to um, ease the burden on staff, not do as many programs, but to increase um, the amount of people that were attending them. Cassie, uh, in, in regard to that, now that the library is moving toward being more fully staffed, Mm -hmm. I suppose that the numbers will, uh, number of events will recover. I think we'll have some, we'll have more events, but I don't think that we will return to the level of events that we were doing in the past, um, as it was leading to a lot of staff burnout. But that there will be a difference in our outreach yes. because that was affected by yes. staff <laughs> more than programs in house. Okay. The more yeah. staff that we have, when we're fully staffed and use services, we get to go more places because there's staff here, and then there's also staff for, for to go to the daycares and the, all the other places. So that that's where that. Mm -hmm. So this is a strategic decision. Yes, uh, staff was getting burnt out, so we said let's we're doing too many programs. Let's do less programs, but let's really work on what the programs are, what the interest is. Let's do really good programs and get the people here for those mm -hmm. um, instead of doing a million programs with right. a few people. And um, uh, it's worked so yeah, far. I think sense. they're in a better spot, especially for <laughs> summer reading. Sorry, I didn't interrupt. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, and Stephanie kind of touched on this. Um, we haven't, um, haven't picked outreach back up quite yet. We were focusing on um, the programs in general um, and we fully intend to pick that back up but overall the outreach attendance um, is up um, across all ages um, but it is down because we just did not do we didn't do the same amount of children's events um, so the children's attendance is way down just because of our focus on the programs that we were doing here so it's hard to ignore the 500 percent increase in outreach teen attendance can you, can you talk about that it's the type of events that we did we did um one of them was a backpack giveaway um, that had over 800 people attend that and then um, one was a football game okay yeah. <laughs> financial report the financial report um 
we're doing well. Um, I did want to point out um, the correct date is down in the footer. Um, I did want to point out that under grants, one of the grants is crossed through. That grant is done. That was one that was carried over, but it has been done. So you won't see that grant on the list anymore. You, uh, we will add grants to that as we get them, but you will not see that one anymore because we've used it up. But everything looks good. You will see that our building renovation fund is on there now um, on the third page at the bottom. So um, right now our available budget is around $2 million of the 2.5 that was given to us. That reserve fund has grown, but um, council approved 2.5 at the time. So that's what we're still working with for right now. And I, I just, my comment, and we talked a little bit about this before, but the salaries and wages and the related expenses <clears throat> are not going to show the surplus this year as we've seen in the past, I, I wouldn't think. I don't believe so. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're not seeing the staff turnover that we were at this yeah. point. Yeah. Um, and we've taken steps to try to figure that out so that people weren't burning out as much. So hopefully that makes a difference. Well, my, my point is that that was part of the reason for our current budget from the county council perspective was the significant surplus that we would anticipate in staff but I don't see that right happening. right <coughs> does anyone have any questions for Stephanie okay. <coughs> excuse me foundation report um, foundation report I believe we've sold one t-shirt so <laughs> <laughs> happy to have it <laughs> But um, that was the only change in that account. And we did have a foundation committee meeting today. Karen, would you like to talk about that? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not next on the agenda, though. <laughs> foundation. Oh, I'm sorry. I just thought that you would include a foundation <laughs> report. Never mind that. Okay. You okay. stand corrected. I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Building and Renovation Committee. Um, I just, talk about that. Yeah, I just, if you want to talk about that, I just wanted to put on there that we did have that meeting. It was uh, met with the, project, the county project manager and are still figuring out ways to move that forward at this point. And I have contacted uh, our architect and we'll be meeting. Um, she is extremely busy, but we'll uh, be meeting next week okay, to try good. to figure something out. Will the committee be meeting with her? Or? No, I'm just going to try to see what we can do, and then I'll bring that back okay. to the committee. Okay. The and good news is there's a way forward. <laughs> right. Forward. So there appears to be a way forward. <laughs> After four years? Yes. A long time. <laughs> a long time. Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, we also met yesterday um, uh, with uh, the county administrator in an attempt to resolve an issue we were having with book ordering. Um, and I think we're on our way to a resolution um, for the negative balance that we had and um, moving forward uh, with ordering um, we're going to try to change the things that we're doing a little bit and then hope that there's compromise on the county side so that we can do our best to get people their materials on time and keep that workflow going for our staff and we're we're also uh, committed to trying to get uh, better communication with yes yeah which has been a problem. And now Karen can talk about And foundation <laughs> committee. Okay. Karen, would you like to give <laughs> Quickly scribbling notes to our meeting. Okay, so Stephanie and Lori and Lisa and I had a, I think a really great foundation committee meeting today. We had all kinds of ideas flowing and I'm excited about the possibility of raising money um, for the foundation to do really great things for the library system. So things like marketing and promotion, which who knows about the foundation? Who knows it even exists? So all kinds of ideas on Facebook and website and putting it on bookmarks and flyers and creating a pamphlet about it and all. So that, that's the first thing we want to do is start promoting it. We talked about all the um, potential room naming rights and the donor, you know, tree leaves and we need to increase the 
amounts for those because they were set in I don't know what decade, but a while ago. 20 years ago. <laughs> 20 years ago. So, right, if they're at $50, that really isn't relevant for today's time. So, <laughs> increasing those amounts and then starting to promote that. And then also, we came up, somebody did, with the idea of having something like those donor trees, which you see outside, having them at every branch so that people can donate. Um, for in for their library where th they go which makes sense to me if you live in Liberty you'd like right to donate to that library so that was another idea um, and then we also talked about having at least one ticketed author event like a big name somebody that people would be willing to buy a ticket for to come here at the library and that money would also go towards the foundation um, so we have all kinds of ideas percolating I think we're going to have some really good things as, as we move forward to raise money and we do have ideas and we're not ready to talk about it yet but ideas on where we would like that funding to go and it would be something really great for the library that would benefit the entire community but we'll talk about that next meeting probably yep. did I yes. cover everything I might have missed something that's good, it's good. okay pretty you good, good. For being on the spot right I have to applaud because, uh, your efforts to come up with plans for using the funds because it's probably not good policy for um, nonprofits to carry balances without plans for the use of the funds that, right. that's probably right. not a, right and if we're raising healthy, money healthy we want to be able to say thing. where it's going so yeah. so yeah. it's good to have plans it is know. i agree we're on it we're planning <laughs> if you would like to donate <laughs> right okay new business update to the ill policy Stephanie, you want to explain that a little bit? Um, you all have a copy of this, but we were looking at procedures related to ILL and how we do our book clubs and um, uh, having that work in a better and different way. And when I looked at this, um, it came to my attention that um, it needs to be in our policy that patrons must be at least 18 years old to request interlibrary loan materials. And that's mainly because it, you are financially responsible for these materials when you get them through interlibrary loan. And these interlibrary loan materials are coming from university libraries, mm -hmm. other county libraries. They can be way more expensive than things that, and so if those uh, materials are not returned, the library is responsible for paying that um, and may lose our privileges to get things from that library so um, I just thought this this is one of those things that for me you think it's in there but when you really look at it it needs to be added um, for the financial responsibility so if you want a children's book you can still get one but the parents gonna have to uh, put the put it on their card and request it and then take the financial responsibility for that book so for you, any, oh, sorry go ahead no, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> first. We're trying to do the not talking over each day. I'm, I'm working on that. Yeah, yeah. So for, for any interlibrary loan book, for any, you have to be 18. So, uh, yeah, and, and a lot of people get this confused. It's not when you request a book from a different library within our system. So, right. um, it's like if, if we, if you wanted a book that we did not have, it, we could ask another like Ori County to mm -hmm. lend it to us or Clemson University or Furman mm -hmm. um, we could request it from them okay and we pay um, the shipping and everything for that so there's a lot bound up in that and we certainly do not want to lose our privileges with these other libraries mm -hmm. so um, there are some you know things that we have in place so that people will return those items but it really needs to be adults that check those things out and make those requests and that's true even though the youth card says that the parents are financially responsible that's not a good enough safeguard in this case no i think with ill we need to make sure that people know when you request that you are financially responsible and and if your child wants something you need to put that request in we're not going to fill it if it's somebody under 18 requesting that book from Furman university or you know lisa did you have a question i was going to ask the same question if it's on the youth card like on that application isn't it on the application that they're financially responsible yeah should we change do we need to change the wording on that then since this will be 18 no I um, think just if you're going to do interlibrary loan period it has you have to be 18 years old you could use the library and never choose to get an interlibrary loan book um, these are for pretty special circumstances that we we can't 
we don't have the book and for some reason we can't order the book or it's not in our best interest to order it, we would go out to another library that has it. And then the parent would be responsible? Yes. So the parent would have to check that out and not the youth? Yes. Yes. Currently children can request ILLs and if that book were to be lost or something were not to be returned, you could make the argument, well, it was a child who yeah. requested this, so they're not financially responsible. But there's no way to know who put in the request, if the parent put it on their child's card or, or not. Mm -hmm. This is a, just another safeguard just mm -hmm. to make sure people know that if you're doing an ILL, you have to be 18 and you are financially responsible. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor of adopting this policy? All opposed? Okay. I do have our um, code of ethics that we voted on last week, our last month. If you'll um, take one and pass it down, this goes in your policy notebook. Switch. She even has holes punched over. Yeah. It's all ready to go. No excuse. So just one page? Sorry. Yes. And the next meeting will be Thursday, November 21st at Central Clemson Library. Central Excuse Clemson. me, I have a question. Okay. Can you do this, I guess? Is it okay? Um, I was surprised that we were not reviewing any books, and so I pulled up a new reconsideration request list. And um, the bluest eye, and I looked up at our, you know, the, the request copies that we have, and it was requested to be reconsidered in March. And uh, I, I just don't understand what's happened with that reconsideration request. Well, I will tell you, we've discussed that they do take a long time, but in the, the, the request that we have right now, we recently assigned two librarians across the system to every single book. So um, now it's not just me and the, you know, a, a certain um, a staff reviewing them. We've spread them out to get rid of this backlog so that we can start with our new policy. So you may see some appeals soon if people appeal them to work with. But right now, librarians across the system are working on, I think it's 10 books. Yeah. It just seems strange that it's been seven months and we still know. Did we not vote on no, the blue side already? No. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So do we, when we, you probably won't know yet, would we have anything to read for next meeting? I don't think so. I don't know if there's time enough for, um, there may be time enough for us to get the letters out, but I don't know if there's time enough for the people to then appeal right. and for you all to read the books. Right. But as be. soon as we, um, we're doing this so that we can work through these as quickly as possible so that we can then move forward with the new procedures and new policy. Okay. So as soon as you receive an appeal, then we would then be the notified. Then the board will be notified. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. I have another item. Um, at the last meeting, I was reprimanded and told that I had been written up, and uh, it's in the minutes that I had been written up, and I, my assumption was that it was given to HR. So I said I would like to see a copy of that report, and uh, I waited two weeks, did not receive anything, so I began to call HR, because it's my right to know if there's been a complaint filed against me, even though I'm not a citizen, I mean, I'm not an employee of Pickens County. I am a citizen, and I have a right to see if there's been a complaint filed against me. I have called HR three times, not gotten a response, not gotten a response from anybody, and I need to understand what's going on. Well, I'm not in charge of the HR department, but I am discussing with them if that is something that I can share with you. And if I can, I will, but I don't know if I can. You made it public, though. Huh? You made it public, I didn't so make, does that make it? I did not make uh, the... It was addressed publicly, so shouldn't that the be... The document that is the, the employee filed, I'm working with HR to see if I can let her see that, because it is an employee um, uh, document. So anything concerning employees, I need to figure out, and HR needs to figure out 
if we can share that with any with the public at all and it's a tricky situation and, and if it I is can, very tricky because it involves me as well yeah and it involves an employee and I have a right to see a complaint but you can't funds. see things that are in employee files and that's what we're trying to figure out but the complaints against her so doesn't she Filed have a right to employee. see the complaint that's what we're trying to figure out we're it we're still trying. Like we're, st it's we're not still a cut and dry situation. Yeah. We're still trying like to get answers Stephanie ourselves. Stephanie and Cassie are running into the same problem you are with HR. You're not getting a reply. You're not getting a reply. We just need so, some more input, exactly. and, and then um, we'll get you an answer. All I asked for was just a simple callback. I mean, she could have said, "Well, there's it's complicated. We're working on it." I got nothing. I got crickets. I will communicate with her. Like I said, I don't have any control over HR, but I will communicate with her and continue that conversation and get it to you if I can get it to you. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. A motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Okay.